Hi, this is Ron Sipsik. In this particular video, we're going to look at GDP. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at how to measure GDP via the expenditure approach. But we're going to expand the analysis to look at what we call a complex circular flow model. Now, I assume that the viewer has already looked at my video on the complex circular flow model and is familiar with the terms and symbols in that model. In a simple circular flow world, uh, it's very easy to see uh, the measurement issues around GDP. We talked about in an earlier video that there's the expenditure approach and the income approach to measuring GDP. The expenditure approach looks at what the consumer uh, pays for something and then values the output on the basis of that payment. The income approach uh, looks at it from the other side of the coin, basically examining what businesses paid out to make that output. In the world of simple circular flow, the expenditure approach and the income approach yield the very same number. Now we're going to expand the analysis to complex circular flow where there's more than just a household sector spending. In the world of complex circular flow, we see that not only is household spending, we call that consumption, but businesses are spending, we call that investment. Government is spending, we call that government purchases. And then you have a net export uh, category over here where you have exports of goods and services and you have imports of goods and services. When we export goods and services, let's say we're exporting goods and services from the United States, foreign citizens are buying U.S. output, and that output should be counted as part of GDP, the value of that output. However, we want to deduct out any output that is being purchased by Americans that was made abroad. So notice that imports is subtracted uh, from this equation, in this equation, because we want to deduct from the GDP measurement the value of output produced in another country. Now, if you add these different categories together, you're going to get a measure of what we call total actual expenditures. And as we said in our GDP simple circular flow video, expenditures is a proxy or a, a um, estimate for GDP. And again, GDP, let's remember what GDP is. It's the dollar value of final output produced domestically within a year's time. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, take a, just a harder look at this formula and make sure we understand it. So again, this is the expenditure approach, but this is the expenditure approach applied to the complex circular flow model. Now, C breaks up into two categories, CD and CF. So consumption can, can be consumption of domestic output and consumption of foreign output. I, likewise, breaks up into ID and IF. Investment can be domestic in the sense that businesses are spending on domestic output, but US businesses, let's say, can spend on foreign output. G also breaks up into two parts, GD and GF. GD is government spending on domestic output. GF is government spending on foreign output. So we can, uh, let me just move this over a little bit. We can, we can take CD plus CF plus ID plus IF plus GD plus GF plus X. Now, let's think about M for a moment. This is very, 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 very important. If you have studied the complex circular flow model, you know that M equals CF plus IF plus GF. Okay, so M is equal to CF, IF, and GF. If you don't remember that, don't see that in your mind's eye, it would be wise to go back and take a look at the complex circular flow model. So imports 
is the sum of household spending on foreign output plus business spending on foreign output plus government spending on foreign output. So when we subtract M, what we're actually doing is we're subtracting out CF, IF, and we're subtracting out GF. So effectively, when you, when you expand this formula out, it's equal to CD plus CF plus ID plus IF plus GD plus GF plus X minus CF minus IF minus GF, which equals GDP. Okay, now your, your head is spinning, but let's simplify this. This is more straightforward than it may seem at first appearance. We have a plus CF and a minus CF. They cancel. And in fact, that's the very purpose in subtracting M. In subtracting M, we pull the CF out of C. We pull the IF out of I, and we pull the GF out of G. So by subtracting M, by subtracting M, we pull the foreign components out of C, I, and G. Now let me move that down, move that up a little bit. There we go. So what are we left with? We've got C, D plus I, D plus G, D plus X equals GDP. So let me give you an example here. U.S. household spending on U.S. output plus U.S. business spending on U.S. output plus U.S. government, and this would be federal, state, and local, spending on U.S. output plus any foreign spending on U.S. output equals all spending on U.S. output, which equals GDP via the expenditure approach. I'll give it to you another with another country. Japanese household spending on Japanese output plus Japanese business spending on Japanese output plus Japanese government spending on Japanese output plus any foreign spending on Japanese output must equal the value of all spending on Japanese output, which is our measure, estimate, proxy for GDP. Okay? So, you need to really know both of these formulas. This formula here is equal to this formula here. You need to know both of them. Uh, the fact is, in some applications, this is a little more helpful. In other applications, this is a little more helpful. Okay, now, I want to actually show you this on the complex circular flow model. I want to tie this formula to the complex circular flow model, and that will conclude our objectives for this video. So let me move this up. And... I'm going to sketch in part of the complex circular flow model. I'm not going to sketch in the entire model. So here's the business sector. Here is the household sector. I'm going to put in the government sector. I'm going to put in, let me just dot in here. I'm going to put in up here the foreign sector. Now, <clears throat> let, me, let me get a couple different colors going here so you can see this. If I take CD, CD is right here. Say CD is equal to $500. And if I take, let me get a different color, if I take GD and say GD is equal to 
$250. And then if I take ID and say ID is equal to $150. And then if I take X and say X is equal to $100. If I have, let me get a different color here. This is so important. I have to pick out a cool color. Let's go with maroon. My dad used to have a maroon Chevy Caprice. My dad loved that car. I think it was a 1968 maroon Chevy Caprice. My dad loved that car. So maroon has a warm and fuzzy feeling to me because I remember riding around in the back seat of a maroon Chevy Caprice and remembering my dad being so happy about driving that car around. All right, back to our regular programming here. GDP is right here. Why? It's CD plus ID plus GD plus X equals 500 plus 250, 750 plus 150, 900 plus 100. Oh, I made it work out so pretty. GDP equals 1,000. Now, take a moment and think of what we just said. With one number, one number, one number, one number, one number, we have described the size of this economic system. With one number, we have described the size of this economic system. And this, this GDP number is probably the single most important macroeconomic number that is calculated by the government. Policymakers refer to it all the time. It, if you're talking about something called economic growth, economic growth would be this number gets bigger year to year. So if this number is getting bigger year to year, so if next year this number is 1150 and then the next year it's 1320, then the economy is growing. The pie is getting bigger. In a world where population growth rates are usually positive, at least they are in the United States, the number of mouths to feed is increasing you want the pie to be getting bigger over time. Well, GDP is a measure of the size of the economic pie. So economic growth is rising GDP over time. We'll be talking a lot more about this. Okay, so this is actually called the expenditure approach. You say, well, why didn't you put CF and IF and GF in here? I didn't have to because of the way the model is set up, I can get directly to CD, ID, GD, and X. I mean, I could take CD plus CF, plus ID plus IF, plus GD plus GF, plus X, minus M, minus M would be minus CF, minus IF, minus GF, but that would be redundant based on the fact that I can get these numbers directly. Okay, now what I'm actually showing you is called the product side of the economy. I'm showing you the product side. And in a later video, I'll be showing you the product side and the income side. Okay, but for now, we'll be content to cover this. So we, we should be able, let me, let me just quickly uh, blast back up to the top here and just remind you that Every principles of macro student should know these two formulas. Let me get my pen back. Should know these two formulas. And these are two formulas or variations of the same idea. And it's helpful to be able to see that formula, where those, where those variables actually fall on a model. And we'll use the complex circular flow to accomplish that. In our next video related to GDP and the circular complex circular flow. We're going to take a take a look at what is what are called the national income and product accounts. So we're we're going to tie this expenditure 
um, this expenditure approach to uh, the whole concept of income. So we'll be looking really at the belly side or the bottom side of the complex circular flow model. Stay tuned.